Bears. to have an unfavourable opinion of the Judge Dredd movie from 1995 starring Sylvester Stallone. Most people seem to prefer the 2012 Dredd movie starring Carl Urban, which is a very good movie, but I'm here to defend the Sly version and argue it's more comic accurate than the Carl Urban version. One thing I hear slash read people complain about is it's silly. Well, having started to read the Judge Dredd case files collections, I can honestly say the Sylvester Stallone version is definitely more in line with these stories. There's a story called The Black Plague, where Dredd is out in the scorched earth riding a talking horse trying to stop mutant spiders from invading Mega City 1. Let me say that again. Dredd rides a talking horse to stop mutant spiders invading Mega City 1. Plus, his arch nemesis in the comics is Judge Death, a mutant from a different dimension who kills people because only crime is committed by the living. Plus, a plotline from the Sly movie about Dredd and Rico being genetically created by the DNA from the council is from the comics. So technically, the 1995 movie has more in common with the Dread comics in tone than the 2012 movie. They were killing each other in you there! You could have gone out the window. Forty floors? It would have been suicide! Maybe, but it's legal. Which, in all honesty, felt like it was going for the grim dark tone that all comic book movies were going for post Dark Knight. Now, I like the Dark Knight, but I hate when studios try and cash in on something because it's popular and they half arse it. See everyone trying to do a shared universe and not putting in the effort now. It worked better for Dread than others because Dread does have a dark edge to him, but man, that was a grim time for a lot of movies. Also, there's more characters from the comics in the 1995 movie in comparison to the 2012 version. In the 2012 version, there's only Judge Dread and Judge Anderson. There's a chief judge, but I don't think they're actually named. I was surprised Mama wasn't a comic book character, to be fair, but she was created for the film. In comparison, the 1995 movie has Judge Dredd, Judge Hershey, Chief Justice Fargo, and Rico. Yeah, it's not massively more characters, but for an adaptation it plays a part. Also, the 1995 movie actually feels like a futuristic movie. It has a cyberpunk look and plenty of futuristic looking stuff. Robots, weaponry, vehicles, etc. Dredd doesn't have the cyberpunk feel to it. Near future at best. The only futuristic things from that movie is the Lawgiver handgun. I said, hot shot. Domino Gleason's cybernetic eyes. I guess the judge's motorcycles at a push? To be fair, the scale of some of the stuff is futuristic. The building shutters, you know, that sort of thing. Everything else looks current though. I know the budget had something to do with it, so I can't fault it too much. Anyway, back to the 1995 movie. The judge's outfits are actually very comic accurate, and they even got Versace to make it for them. Yeah, the material under the shoulder armour looks pretty much like whatever gym clothes are made out of, but if you were to tell me that was some futuristic body armour, I'd believe it. Trent is cool, but it's basically a tactical jacket with body armour plating. Don't get me wrong, I'd wear the hell out of it myself. But it's not comic accurate. And I know, people will argue that the armour from the comics and the slow movie wouldn't be practical in a real life setting in comparison to the Dread one. But A, there's a lot of stuff in movies that wouldn't be practical in a real life setting. And B, I'm going for accuracy, not for what would actually work, because I'm weird like that. And here's the controversial bit, in case you didn't think any of the previous takes weren't already. The Judge Dread 1995 has more variety in the action. Look, I love the action scenes in Dread 2012. They're great, and it does it really well. But it basically boils down to fighting goons the entire movie until the corrupt judges show up. Don't get me wrong, taking out goons relentlessly is always fun, and the slow-mo effects are brilliant. But having a boss fight or two would accentuate this. I feel they could have extended the corrupt judges' fight a bit to do this. There's just more variety in the 1995 movie. There's fights with regular criminals, there's fights with redneck cyborgs, fights with giant robots, fights with judges, as well as a final battle with Rico at the end. I will say, Carl Urban definitely plays a more comic accurate dread. Everything comes back to the law and enforcing it. I love when he keeps asking Anderson what their options are and then assessing it via the law. Call it. Sir? You're on assessment, rookie. Call it. Multiple armed targets, obstructed line of sight, gas grenades? Respirators. Sylvester Stallone definitely plays a more Stallone version of Dread, where the upholding of the law takes a backseat partway through the movie to getting revenge on Rico and the corrupt Chief Justice. What do we do? What do we do? Fine, Rico. And doesn't get brought up as much. Now most people will talk about Sly taking off his helmet as a big no-no, and one of the reasons that his Dread movie sucked. Yeah, Dread never takes off the helmet in the comics and Kyle Levin kept his helmet on for his entire movie. 
But honestly, I never thought of that as anything major besides a cool gimmick. I know there's some symbolism in it showing Dread could be anyone, and it would have been more comic accurate if he kept it on, but it wasn't a game changer for me. The movie wouldn't have been any different. If you didn't like it before, I can't see the main character keeping the helmet on suddenly making you like it. When you take into consideration the worlds the Dreads inhabit, the Stallone version is just more entertaining, at least to me. In all honesty though, I'd love to see Kyle Urban's more accurate Dread in Stallone's movie. It would probably be the most comic accurate version. I went into this just thinking about defending the Stallone movie, but ended up seeing which Dread movie was more comic accurate from the small amount of story he suffered. It might change the more I read though. And honestly, for me, Stallone's version is more comic accurate in terms of the world. Kyle Urban definitely nailed the character though. But his version's world was hampered by the small scale of it. I know that's partly the point, but it didn't give us much to go on. I will admit that's probably more of a budgetary thing than anything else. So, in closing, Sylvester Stallone's movie has a more comic accurate world, Carl Urban's movie has a more comic accurate character, according to the small amount of research I've done. But who am I to judge? Go watch whichever one you prefer, and enjoy it. You betray the law! law!